So we've been talking about AC. And we looked at a waveform that basically looked like that. And we recognized that this is the period. And this is the amplitude. We can draw this all the way down to here. So we basically have an X, which is time, and Y is usually voltage. And we have this alternating waveform. And at this point right here, we have maximum. And what kind of energy is voltage? Potential. Potential. So we have maximum potential here. And we have maximum potential here. Okay, still the greatest distance from zero. And how often that happens is dependent on what is generating that waveform. So, I have a yo-yo here. And then I swing it like a pendulum, right? I'm switching back and forth between, right, when I get it right at the extent of its travel, it has maximum potential energy. And when it swings up here and stops, it has max potential and no kinetic. As it starts to fall, it loses potential and gains kinetic. And when it gets to the bottom, has no potential, can't fall any further, but has maximum velocity or maximum kinetic energy. So it trades this off back and forth, trading potential for kinetic and kinetic for potential. And as such, you notice that it has a frequency. And that frequency will be the same no matter what the amplitude is. They're independent of each other. Frequency is dependent on the length of the string. If I make the string shorter, it goes at a higher frequency. The amplitude is based on how much energy you put into the system. If I put more energy into the system, I get a larger amplitude. If I put less energy into the system, I get a smaller amplitude. Do you see how that works? And we're, we're doing that trade-off and that frequency that this seems to naturally swing is called the resonant frequency of this system. Okay? So resonant frequency is a, or an item, let's call it a system. Let's call it not an item, but let's call it a systems. Natural frequency. Okay, everything somewhere along the line has a resonant frequency to it. Listen to this, what happens when I... Did you hear the ring? Yep. Maybe I can do it better this way. Just... Did you hear... Boy, that hurts. Did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear that little ring? Yep. It's based on the con uh, constitution of this yo-yo. Everything has a resonant frequency. Okay, resonant frequency can be good or it can be bad. Okay, without resonant frequency, we would have sound, no sound, no radio, no music. The bad is that resonance causes vibration. 
damage through vibration. Okay, anything that vibrates is using resonance to do that. So if you're playing a musical instrument, you're using resonance. If you're talking, air is going across your vocal cords. Each vocal cord is a different shape and size, so it gives you different notes, different pitches, and that's resonance. Remember the Maxell commercials where they had the breaking glass, a guy sitting in a chair and all the the breaking glass, is it live or is it Memorex? That was all a question of resonance and that's the bad part of resonance. If you uh, have a wine glass that's made of crystal and you vibrate that wine glass at its resonant frequency, it will just fall apart. The resonant frequency adds on itself. If you've ever had a car that runs fine at 55 and runs fine at 65 but at like 61 miles an hour it vibrates you go a little faster the vibration goes away you go a little slower the vibration goes away and that's because every every rotation you have an out of balance in your wheel it's a little bit heavier right there and what that does is it makes the wheel want to move back and forth wants to oscillate, doesn't want to spin on here, it wants to spin on a radius that's a different point. And as such, that causes vibration. And if you've got a car that has a shock absorber in it, if you notice, when you go out to your car and you press down on the bumper, it comes back up, and maybe if you press hard enough, it bounces a couple times. So your car also, your suspension also has a resonant frequency. So if the frequency of the rotation of your tire matches the frequency of your car's bounce, then every time this happens, it's going to cause the bounce to get worse and worse and worse. As soon as you drive a little faster or slower, you're no longer synchronizing those points. Okay, it's kind of like you ever be in the car in front of you, uh, you have your turn signal on, and sometimes it looks like they're flashing together, but then they start to go off a little bit, and eventually they're doing like this, yep. and then they come back to flashing at the same rate. That's what happens when you change speed. If you're at the same speed, they're flashing at that same rate all the time. But if you change the speed a little bit, they're no longer flashing, and that takes that energy out of that system. Okay, so it contributes to the bounce. The wheels are actually helping the bounce along because of the frequency. I'm sure you can think of many uh, examples of that sort of thing. did a whole episode on resonant frequency. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's a, that's why that bridge over at Tacoma went yep. resonant frequency. Well, that in poor design. Okay. White light contains all the colors. Okay, sunlight contains all colors in roughly the same proportion. If we take that white light and put it through a filter, we can get, say for example, blue light. Okay?
the filter blocks or reflects back everything except the color that it allows through. So if I look at Roy G. Biv, our filter looks like this. It lets only blue light through. We also have, on the other side, white noise, which ranges from zero to, I'm going to put it in parentheses, infinity hertz. And the reason I put it as infinity in, in the quotes there is because theoretically it goes to infinity, but in practicality we can't make infinite frequency. So let's just say for our purposes that it goes from zero to one gigahertz, or let's make it one terahertz. That should pretty much accomplish any, you know, over, uh, encompass anything that we would ever use. Same amplitude for every frequency. And what we call that, if you want to know what that sounds like, it's static. If you set a TV between TV stations, you get a shh. That's white noise. So if we put white noise, which ranges from zero to one terahertz, we could have a filter then that goes from zero to one terahertz, and we would be able to select, say, for example, 100 gigahertz out of that. and have just that signal out of that noise. We're not going to try and determine the brown note, are we? What's that? The brown note. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> it was a theoretical note back in like World War II or something to make everybody shit themselves uncontrollably. <laughs> Well, I suppose that that's theoretically possible. <laughs> I don't know if you, uh, you know, if you can get your intestines have a frequency at which they churn. If you can stimulate that frequency, then theoretically it's possible. It's kind of like shaking up sand and you can just stick your hand in it. Yeah. Yeah. Same basic idea. Uh, yeah, okay. Good good analogy there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how do we do this? How do we accomplish this? Well, earlier on, we looked at the yo-yo and we said that its frequency is kind of determined by some portion of the device or some characteristic of the device itself. And in order to understand how we're going to do this, we're going to talk about two new components today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this.
just going to put music. So simplified idea, if I take music and run it through an, in, an inductor, the low frequencies go through the inductor and we would run them to a woofer. The high frequencies go through a capacitor and they would go to our tweeter. So we can split that signal into two parts using what we loosely refer to as a crossover network. Capacitors are measured in farads. So a typical capacitor value might be one millifarad. Inductors are measured in henrys. So a typical inductor value might be three millihenrys. What will happen here? What's going to go through the capacitor? High frequency white noise. High frequencies will go through the capacitor. Oh, well maybe they won't. <laughs> what will go through the inductor? What will go through RL? 
furnish your or electricity. Middle. Oh, mid range. So now we have a high and a low pass together. It's a bandpass filter. Hmm. Curve actually looks like this. Basically allows one frequency to go through. So what happens if I take this network and put it in series, like this. Through here. It's still gonna be your low pass. Correct. Through here. It's still gonna be your high pass. And what will not make it through? So there are four types of filters. High pass, low pass, band pass, and band stop. Can you think of any examples where you might use any of these filters in the real world? Yeah, you hear those cars that boom and They've got so much bass, they shape themselves apart. All right, so as crossover networks. Yep. Um, there's a low-pass filter involved there. Uh, I used to have a sub box in my truck that was called a bandpass box. Mm -hmm. And it, it's half sealed, half ported. 
So like the subs are, are mounted in the middle of the box, and then this half would be all sealed, and then this half would have airports. Yeah. So that, that gets you the low and the high, because that's, that's how the boxes work. It's ported boxes are higher frequency than lower than sealed boxes. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have to move that. You gotta export that air somehow. And if you don't, you get a lot lower heat. Remember, this goes up to one terahertz. So let's open our minds to higher frequencies. Where else do we use filters? Anytime you tune a radio station, you're using a filter to pick, what, 98.5 on your FM dial. That's select it using a filter so that you have a bandpass filter like this and the frequency that you're selecting is 98.5 megahertz so that's how you're picking out that station out of all the other stations that are out there So we can use filters to select from different audio signals, different light values, different radio frequencies. All that is done using filtering. And in the analog world where we are, you know, kind of early in the game, uh, our filtering is done using what we call reactive components. And the examples of those are inductors and capacitors. Inductors are kind of hard to come by. They are not very common because we usually use capacitors and pass those around to offset the effects of inductance. So I believe I have some around, but I don't know where they are right now. We don't need them right away anyway. But yeah, there's some capacitors. You notice on the back, does it have a value? It does. I just, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> uh, 225 PW. 0 0.068 at 10 equals 10%. And 100 DC. What does it say? What's the first line say? 225 PW with a little two in front of it. Picowatts. Is it two? Oops, that doesn't work. 225. Yeah. That would be, yeah, 225. I wish I could see what they say. Sometimes it has to do with how you have the blue ones or the red ones? Red ones. There's nothing that says like 102, 103 or point one or anything like that. Yeah. I'll put it up here exactly as it shows on here. It says a little two circle. 225 PW equals 10% and 100 D. D. Exactly what it says on there. All right, so it's probably this then. Zero point zero six eight microfarads plus or minus ten percent, which has got to be a lie. Good for a hundred volts DC. So point zero six eight microfarads, or that would be sixty eight nanofarads. And then the blue ones.
What does it say? It says EUC point zero zero one MFD six hundred BDC. So point zero zero one micro uh, millifarad. And six hundred volts. So this one can take more voltage than the other one can. So they all have a value. They all have a data sheet somewhere. Okay, so why is this important? Filtering is used for what? To separate and isolate signals and in some cases to route different signals to different places. Filtering is done using reactive components called capacitors and inductors. Capacitors, capacitors are by their nature high pass filters and inductors are by their nature low pass filters. And we can combine them in different circuits as shown to give us two additional filters. One is used to allow a very narrow range of frequencies to go through it, and that is called band pass. One is used to prevent a specific frequency from going through, and that would be a band stop filter. All right, in the wonderful world of musicians, we use these to get rid of feedback in microphones. We can just duck that frequency and get rid of that frequency quickly by switching in that circuit and it kills the feedback immediately. So would that be how uh, noise canceling headphones work? Well, that's done digitally, but yes, basically the same thing. Noise is something that comes into both sides at the same time. So it's easy to cancel that out. You throw it out of phase and add them together, yeah. right? but the individual signals are different, so you don't do that. It's one way to look at that, simply. All right, so we have to think of things a little differently. How are we doing on time? Uh, 9.35. Good, we're in good shape. I brought a toy today, and we're gonna learn a new name for this thing. has a bell and it has a slide. Have you ever seen one of these? Did anybody ever play one? I've never played one, but I've seen them. I've been to New Orleans. I'm not playing it. I'm just <laughs> going to show, show you what it is. So this thing, obviously, is a, the general public would refer to it as a trombone, and that's exactly what it is. But as you're probably aware, it has a slide on it. And that slide does what? Changes allows the pitch. Yeah, allows the change the pitch. It increases the, the volume yeah. of the trombone. It makes it longer, it makes it shorter. Right? This actually changes takes a noise that you make into this mouthpiece. So when you blow into the mouthpiece, you go that's white noise. It's as close to white noise as you can get. And when you put that on here and you play that through this, it gives you one note out of all of that white noise that this trombone selects based on its length and diameter. Okay, look at it like length and diameter. You put a certain length and diameter together, then you get a trombone or any other musical instrument. So really, what is this really? It is a continuously variable, okay? Because I can change the note to an infinite number of notes. So it's continuously variable, single pole, because it only has one set of widths and diameters, 
and then we refer to it as an audio filter. So it is a continuously variable single pole audio filter in our world. Outside of the classroom, it's a trombone, right? But all musical instruments, like I said, function as filters. Without resonance, we would not be able to have any of these things. So you kind of have to look at it for what it is. It's a very important concept. And we're going to see that most of the time we're going to use it in friendly ways. But there are also many, many times that we have to be aware that resonance can be our enemy. OK? If you have time, go on YouTube and look up uh, helicopter resonance. And you'll see videos of helicopters just shaking themselves apart because the blades aren't balanced. Happens all the time. You'd be amazed at how many $600,000 helicopters vibrate themselves to death on a yearly basis. So once it starts, you can't really, it's very difficult to get it out of that mode. The way to get it out of that mode is to pick it up, lift it up, get off the ground then you don't have the bouncing. It's you're just in the air at that point. But that's kind of counterintuitive. What you really think you want to do is shut it down. But that makes it the worst, because then it just continues. So any questions today? We got a lot done today. You should be able to answer a couple questions in our final exam stuff. Talked about filtering, introduced capacitors and inductors. Looked at four different types of filters and looked at the generic functions or natural characteristics <coughs> of capacitors and inductors. All right, any questions? All right, I'm going to turn this off. <laughs>